All right, so in this video, we're going to go through five very simple, basic beginner tips for using state flow and subscribe for more because I'm going to come out with more of these videos as well. I just find that there's so many different things that you could learn on state flow that would really make using it a lot easier. So let's get started with the first one. All right, so let's get into the first one, which is copy and pasting states. All right, so when you bring a state into state flow, obviously you could, for example, right click, copy and then paste. But it's, that's a very silly way of doing it. It takes a long time. What you can do instead is if you hold down the right click, so you've got left click, right, to select it, right click it, and then just drag anywhere, and you'll get a second state. So you can right click, and that will bring you a second state. Likewise, you can hold control and left click. So you can either just right click and drag, or you can hold control and right click. It's nice that they've given you two options. So... I personally prefer to right click and drag, but you can do whatever you want. You can do left left click as well. It makes it so much nicer and simpler and easy to use. A lot quicker than left clicking and copying every time. One thing to note as well is that when you go into Simulink, it's the same. So you obviously left click to select. You can then also hold control and left click to duplicate. And likewise, you can just right click and drag duplicate as well. So it works both in Simulink and Stateflow. All right, tip number two, actions within states versus transitions. So there is a difference and it mostly boils down to personal preference, but I personally prefer to have all of the actions done within the state, but just it keeps my transitions clean. But I'll show you both and you can pick, just go with either. All right, so we've got this state here, we'll call it on. We'll then use our little trick to duplicate and make it off. State will automatically lay with that off as well, which is nice. So now, if I wanted to do a transition here, I could say an action, which is the variable X is equal to one. So when I transition from on to off, the variable X will equal one. Then likewise, in here, I could say X is equal to two. What we're saying here now is that this, this state, when I come in here and I transition over towards here to off, then x will equal 1. When I get to off, then x will equal 2. So there's two ways you can do that. You can either do, you can do actions inside their actual transitions themselves, or you can do them inside the states. Either or is completely fine. All right, so moving on to number three, we've got variables. Now, you may have noticed I did something there in the previous step, which I didn't speak about, but now we'll go into it. So you don't really need to declare variables like you do in other like programming languages. But for example, if I wanted to make a variable called y here and say y is equal to three, I wouldn't be able to then just run this simulation. I get an error, as you can see up here, as undefined symbol. The state flow doesn't know what it is. Now it's assuming that it's a output data. So what I could do is I could just type in, as I've done here, y is equal to three. And if I come up here, which you may have noticed in the previous step, I click resolve undefined symbols and then now this will automatically pick for me what it thinks is the best type of variable for this specific state flow now i can come and change it and say okay well it thinks it's an output data i'm going to change it to a local data and you can do the same you can change all the various different data types here now another way that you can declare a variable and again it's just down to personal preference i personally prefer to just click just type in my variables up here and then click resolve but you can actually just come back over here and then you see you've got create data, create event, create message. So you can just click up here, create data. And now I've created a piece of data. I can now change the name. I can call it Hamid, right? And then now it's going to tell me I've got an unused symbol. So now I've created a variable. It's a bit like in C programming. If you declare the variable at the top, but you didn't use it, this program would still run no problem. But it's telling me that obviously I haven't used this variable. So now I can come in here and say Hamid is equal to nine. And then now I can run it fine. No problem. So again, you can either just type in the variable as is and then click resolve undefined symbols. Or alternatively, you could just come up here and select create data and you can create the variable yourself. All right, next up, dealing with simulation time. So by default, state flow sets the simulation time to 10 seconds. We can change that. And I generally would like to have my simulation run or infinity which basically just means when i click run it will just start running and then it will stop running the program 
when I click stop. I personally prefer it like that. You can change it to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you want. So up here, you've got stop time 10 seconds. So if I click run now, it doesn't actually run for 10 seconds. It has its own kind of internal clock. And so clicking 10 seconds here will let you just run it pretty much instantly. So if I come and click right up here at stop time, I can type in INF for infinity. So INF for infinity, click run, and then now it will just run forever. So you can see it's gone from on to off and it's staying there. So if I now come here and do another transition going back here, and then click run. You can see here it's just transitioning from on to off and it will do that for infinity. All right, and the final tip for this video is simulation speed. So as you can see in the previous tip, the state flow chart was swinging from on to off immediately. So you can see it's going very rapid. What if you wanted to slow that down? Super easy to do. Stop your simulation, come up here to debug and you've got animation speed. You can then go to slow, you can go to medium, you can go to none, lightning fast. So let's try lightning fast. <laughs> so you can see there that it's uh, moving so fast, it looks like it's pretty much stationary. Let's get stop. Then we can go fast, run. So it's going rapid, go medium. And so here you can see, you can, you, you can now see the transition. I like to do it on slow. And then finally you have none and none is a bit, it's a bit tricky, but basically the blue that you're seeing is an animation. So here we were talking about the animation speed. So if we go to none, then we're not going to see any animation showing up. It's just going to stay blank, but the simulation will be running. So if I click run now, you, we can see down here that the time elapse is there. And the simulation is running. However, we're not seeing any animation. I personally don't use this at all. All right. And then as a bonus tip for sticking around, which I appreciate, I'm going to show you how you can cause all of your states to become the same size. So as you build bigger and bigger states, it becomes an absolute mess. And so this tip is going to be an absolute lifesaver for you. So at the moment, we've got these two states. Let's get some more states going on. Okay. All right, and then now let's have some different size states. All right, so if you're anything like me, that just drives you absolutely nuts. So you can just select all of them and then right click any state, come down to arrange, and then you've got match width, match height, and match size. So if you just click match size, they all become the exact same size. You can thank me later. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. I appreciate it, and I shall see you in the next one.